Hello, I'm Alan Hawes. Welcome to Cypress Academy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a project that you will use to connect to the Android app. So first we need to make PSOC 4 BLE firmware that we'll be able to connect to. I'm going to build the project so that it starts with a blinking blue LED when the device is not connected. It's got a red LED that you'll be able to turn on and off from the app and a CapSense slider that you'll be able to read the values of. First, you'll need to start by creating a new project. File, New, Project. This is gonna be a PSOC 4100 BLE slash PSOC 4200 BLE. And we'll call this CapSense LED Project. Okay, we'll start with an empty schematic. Go. Once we've got the project created, We'll start by adding the components that we need for this project in the schematic. First, we'll put in the BLE component from the component catalog into our project. Then we'll add the CapSense component, which we'll use for the CapSense slider object in our project. Then I'll need two pins, one pin for the red LED and one pin for the blue LED. I'll use digital output pins to drive the two different LEDs. I'll copy it onto the screen I'll change its name to red. I'll set its initial drive state to high because the LED is active low and I would like the LED to be off when the chip turns on. Then I'll get another digital pin, a digital output pin. This one, I'll change its name to blue. Then let's see here. I'll need a PWM to drive the blue output. So I'll grab the UDB based PWM from the catalog. Because the blue LED is active low, I'm gonna to wanna to invert the output of the PWM. So I'll grab a NOT gate out of the library. Let's see, I'll put it on the screen and then I'll connect to the output of the PWM and then I'll connect the blue LED to that. All right, cool. So then I'm gonna change the configuration of the PWM so that it's a one output PWM. And then I'll need a clock to drive the PWM, so I'll grab a clock component out of the library. We'll set this clock to be driving the PWM, and I'll configure it to one kilohertz. This will give us a blinking LED. How cool is that? I would like to not leave the reset input of the PWM just hanging, so I'll attach a logic low because it's an active high reset. So I'll grab a logic low out of the component catalog and I'll connect it to the reset pin. I'm gonna change the name of the PWM so it's got a sensible name to interface to it from the firmware. This circuit is the PWM interface circuit. It drives the blue LED when you're not connected and when you are connected, it will stop driving it and it will go off. The red LED is going to be the LED that we will switch from our Android app. I'm going to disable the hardware connection as I'll only interface to this pin from the software. When you flip it inside of your Android app, it will turn on, and when you flip the switch the other way, it will turn off. All right, so now I need to configure the CapSense component. I'm gonna start by giving it the name CapSense because I like to type less. And then I'm gonna add a linear slider to the project. It will have five sensors because on the board, there are five sensors and you can see them neatly labeled on the silk screen. Okay, I'm gonna change the name of BLE to BLE just because it's a hair simpler. At this point, we have our schematic completely configured. In the next lesson, we're gonna configure the BLE itself, which means we're gonna set up the profile, set up the services, and set up the characteristics that you'll use to interface to with your Android application. 